The Wiltshire Museum has fantastic collections from across the Stonehenge and Avebury World Heritage Site, but I'm going to share with you the finds from Bush Barrow, which you'll see in the case here. Bush Barrow is located on a ridge looking out over Stonehenge itself. In this mound was the burial of a chieftain, a really important person who died just after 2000 BC when Stonehenge was at its height. We know that this man was important because of two things. Firstly, where he was buried, on the crest of a, a ridge looking down over the monument of Stonehenge. It's one of, his is one of 50 burial mounds across that ridge. And the second is, the objects this man was buried with show how important he was. The gold and the bronze were just represented unimaginable wealth in the Bronze Age. And that shows how important he was. We call him the Bush Barrow Chieftain. We don't know for sure what area the Bush Barrow Chieftain was in charge of, whether it was Wiltshire or it was the whole of the Southwest. But what we do know is that with two to three hundred burial mounds very close to Stonehenge, this was a place where people chose to be buried. And it's likely that there were a whole series of chieftains with their territories that came together at Stonehenge to be buried at a place that was so important to them. He was buried with objects that those who left behind wanted to show how important he was and that he could take with him into the next life. Your eye immediately goes to the gold lozenge. This is made of very thin sheet gold that was wrapped over a wooden backing. The point at the top and the bottom has a very precise angle of 81 degrees. That's the same angle between where the sun rises at the midwinter and midsummer solstices, so it has an astronomical importance. And the very finely detailed embossed decoration, particularly round the outer border, is laid out to a tolerance of less than half a millimetre. What that tells us is that they understood astronomy, geometry and mathematics 4,000 years ago. But the most amazing object isn't that lozenge. It's actually this dagger you can see here on the right. The blade is made of bronze and they've been made in Brittany across the English Channel and it has a handle. The modern wood handle there is to hold what's left of the original 4,000 year old dagger. And it's decorated with thousands of tiny gold studs, each of which is the same thickness as a human hair and most of them are less than a millimetre long. We know from the pieces that are left how many studs there are per square centimetre. We know the size of the handle it's easy just to multiply that up, 140,000 gold studs. If you could put one in place a minute, that's nine months worth of work, let alone making them in the first place. But this chieftain was not just buried with that. He also is buried with this mace. It's a ceremonial mace. The head is made of a fossil sponge from Cornwall, that's over 150 miles away, that's been ground and polished. That represents well over 200 hours of constant work. The handle is decorated with bone mounts, and it's possible those bone mounts made gleaming white polished shaft. So this would have been so impressive. He was also buried with, um, over here you see a gold hook. That was a fitting for a, one of the daggers, and it would have stopped it sh slipping through his belt. But this is purely decorative and again it would have shimmered in the sunlight. He was buried also with a second dagger, even bigger than the first, and a, an axe. And it's worth remembering that axes and daggers are carved on the stones of Stonehenge at roughly this time. And that just shows the importance of the burial mounds and the monument itself, that interrelationship. But there's more to the story of his barrow, because we know that there was an earlier burial. Down in the bottom of the case here are the studs of the handle of a second dagger, but this one will have dated to about 2400 BC. And in the back corner you see that sherd of pottery, enormous sherd of pottery, carefully excavated by a rabbit digging into the, into the burial mound. That is a cremation vessel, so it would have held a cremation of another important person, and that dates to about 1600 BC. What that tells us is that the burial mound where the Bush Barrow Chieftain was laid was being used for burials 
for more than 800 years, almost spanning the time between when the sarsen stones were put up at Stonehenge and when Stonehenge goes out of use at 1500 BC. It's a family burial vault. This man is part of a noble dynasty. The objects in the burial show how complex Bronze Age society must have been, because clearly he is at the top, he's the boss. But to make these objects, you had to have a whole range of people with incredible craft skills. And they couldn't have been growing food, they wouldn't have been looking after crops. So other people had to do that. We also have evidence of shamans, of priests. So it just shows that you have a highly organized society with a chief at the top, people to organize things, Cross people, and then everyone who did the hard work. You may remember I jokingly said the cremation urn was excavated by a rabbit. That's because the mound was burrowed into by rabbits and it was found on the surface just by a rabbit burrow. But the burial was excavated by William Cunnington. He was one of the very first archaeologists and he excavated nearly 200 burial mounds across Wiltshire and the Stonehenge and Avebury landscape. And he was learning as he was going. And one amazing story is about the Bush Barrow Dagger. It was in the grave upright, and the man who was excavating it thought it was a spearhead. So he troweled his way down, and Cunnington describes how he scattered the shining points of gold with the end of his trowel, because he didn't expect to find a fully preserved Bronze Age dagger handle. I hope you've enjoyed finding out about the Bush Barrow Chieftain. Do come and see Britain's richest Bronze Age burial here at the museum and explore our other amazing prehistoric finds from across the Stonehenge and Avebury World Heritage Site. Remember, we are halfway between Stonehenge and Avebury. Do come and visit when you're coming to Wiltshire.